Within the world of Barrett's esophagus, we have different levels of disease. The majority of patients are diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus without dysplasia, or what we call non-dysplastic Barrett's. This just means there are not changes that are looking more cancerous or more, more ugly, for lack of better words, in terms of the cells, that this dysplasia, which basically means bad change of the cells. And there are certain pathologic criteria that pathologists use to define what dysplasia is. This can then advance to what we call low-grade dysplasia, then high-grade dysplasia, which is the step right before we get to cancer. Once you get to low-grade dysplasia, the risk of cancer over the next five years goes up significantly. With non-dysplastic Barrett's, it can be about 1% over a 10-year interval, whereas with low-grade dysplasia, it can be anywhere from 5 to 13% over a five-year time frame. And once you reach what's called high-grade dysplasia, or sort of the really ugly cells that are almost cancerous by definition, once we reach high-grade dysplasia, the risk of cancer over the next five years is as high as 50%. So these different steps that the body goes through to develop esophageal cancer are important for us to identify because they also guide our different treatment strategies. So patients who have no dysplasia we can observe this or watch this with what we call surveillance. So we can do endoscopy every few years and take biopsies or samples to ensure that it hasn't progressed because the risk is very low. Patients with dysplasia, we want to intervene on because that's the patient that we can make a difference on and prevent cancer that is more likely than not going to develop if we absolutely do nothing. So that's where we would offer them the endoscopic eradication therapy with resection and ablation type strategies because we know we can cure that disease. Within that group of non-dysplastic Barrett's, we have started to look at what we call risk stratification and provide you with some sort of understanding of what your risk of developing cancer is. There are lots of different ways we've tried to look at this with clinical scores in terms of, you know, are you obese, do you smoke, and then put numbers to it. Those have not been perfect. More recently, there have been some innovation around this, and one of these is what we call a tissue systems pathology, or what's called tissue cipher, which has been a technology that's gone through very vetted studies and clinical trials to show that it's extremely effective at predicting which patients will develop cancer or precancerous lesions in a five-year window of having this non-dysplastic Barrett's diagnosis. Barrett's is a disease of the tube of swallowing or the food tube. So there is a surface area component. So you can have Barrett's that's just one centimeter or you could have that's 20 centimeters, which is the entire length of the esophagus. The risk goes up with the more Barrett's you have. So based on that surface area coverage, we could say someone's at a little bit higher risk and we may wanna look at things like tissue cipher to address risk. Because if we can identify you are at low risk, we may not need to do that surveillance as often and we may be able to increase that interval or even stop it. So there's a great negative predictive value of a risk score. However, if you have non-dysplastic Barrett's and you have a high risk score, we may offer you that endoscopic therapy.